The American Cigarette Company, makers of Peter Stuyvesant, Paul Revere, and Santos Dumont Cigarettes, present The World at 1 p.m. In the news this afternoon, the hotel industry asks for tax relief, new outbreaks of locusts in the country, South Africa's position in Antarctica, and more soccer violence in Britain. Touchdown on a butterfly in the Blue Caribbean. You're on the Isle of Guadeloupe. Flamboyant two-winged isle fluttering with French flair. Basseterre, the left wing, and Grand Terre, the right wing, are joined by a drawbridge. On whichever wing you enjoy your summer fling, Guadeloupe will delight you with exotic sun, French fun, and jolly rum. And wherever you soak up the island fun, light up the modern one. Peter Stuyvesant, the cigarette of the big, bright world. Rich, choice tobaccos in king size. Plus the miracle filter for easy draw, more flavor, more satisfaction. So much more to enjoy. Good afternoon from Elwyn Morris. The Federated Hotel, Liquor and Catering Association, FEDHASA, says it has asked the government for comprehensive tax relief because many of the 1,300 hotels within the association are threatened with bankruptcy. FEDHASA says in a statement released in Johannesburg that about 6% of its one- and two-star hotels have gone out of business in the past five years. The statement said good Christmas bookings would help tide over smaller hotels, which comprise 80% of the association's graded hotels, until the proposed tax relief plan was adopted. The statement said latest statistics showed that one- and two-star hotels had sustained declines in gross income of almost 20% compared with last year. The Small Business Development Corporation has announced that 10 million rand has been allocated to the Entrepreneurship Training and Development Fund. The program provides for cluster industry workshops, industrial hotel workshops, small business clinics, and buyers and sellers exchanges to be established in areas where the need is the greatest. The first has already been established in Port Elizabeth, and the corporation is now looking at Soweto and possibly Bloemfontein, as well as Durban and the Western Cape. The managing director of the Small Business Development Corporation, Dr. Ben Forslow, has called on financial institutions in the private sector to invest money in the development of industrial premises and areas in less developed centres. He was speaking at the opening of a new industrial park at Lanesia near Johannesburg. Dr. Forslow referred to the advantages of small business as an employment creator and said that its biggest advantage was its relative inexpensiveness in creating jobs. The SBDC created employment at a cost of about 4,000 rand a job, compared with a minimum of 30,000 rand a job in larger industries. Dr. Forslow said the SBDC had created about 40,000 jobs in the past four years. The 1,3 million rand industrial park consists of 12 factory units of 400 square meters, and tenants range from garment and furniture manufacturers to service industries such as vehicle and electronic repairs. New outbreaks of locusts are still occurring in the northern and eastern Cape, the Karoo and the Free State after the recent good rains. Twenty districts are at present affected by the plague. A second person is being treated for Congo fever in the Kimberley Hospital. A nursing sister at the hospital who had been in contact with a Congo fever patient is at present being treated in the hospital's isolation ward. The medical superintendent at the Kimberley Hospital, Dr. Heinrich Höhler, has confirmed that the nurse is in a serious condition after coming into contact with Mr. Adam Serfontein, who was admitted to hospital eight days ago. The chief legal advisor to the Department of Foreign Affairs says there's no threat to South Africa's continued presence in Antarctica. Mr. John Weil has just returned from a United Nations committee meeting at which attempts were made to oust South Africa. Several acts of arson, murder and stone-throwing occurred in black residential areas last night. The police say in their latest unrest report that the charred body of a man was found at Kwanobutle near Port Elizabeth. At Kayalicha in the Western Cape, a bus was set alight, and at Guguletu, a delivery vehicle was set on fire. Incidents of arson also occurred, occurred at Kwamashu near Durban and Mamalodi near Pretoria. Stone-throwers caused extensive damage to shops at Alexandra in Johannesburg. British police made dozens of arrests in Portsmouth last night as rival gangs of soccer fans ran riot. 
Trouble began when home fans attacked a pub where Spur fans had gathered before the match. Staff at a Hertfordshire hospital about 70 kilometres north of London are threatening to kick a mystery Russian patient out unless he starts talking to them. Doctors are convinced he's been faking unconsciousness since a motorcycle crash three weeks ago. The American Secretary of State, Mr. George Schultz, has arrived in Brussels on the second stop of his eight-day tour of Western and Eastern Europe. While in the Belgian capital, he will hold talks lasting three days with NATO foreign ministers on arms control and related issues. Mr. Schultz will also take part in the six-monthly meeting of the NATO foreign ministers. And that wraps up the bulletin. Elwin Morris signing off. Take in the sounds of this wide and wonderful world. Saturday night along the Big White Way, Broadway, where new stars are born in dance and song. See the big roar of the Amazon, a giant wave in the thousand-kilometer race from the sea. Sense the romance of Venice on a moonlit cruise through the magic canals of this bride of the sea. Or swirl to the mariachi guitars on the siesta sands of Acapulco Bay. This is the fascinating world of Peter Stuyvesant. Light up a Stuyvesant. Rich, choice tobaccos. Miracle filter. King size. So much more to enjoy. This newscast was brought to you by the makers of Peter Stuyvesant, Paul Revere, and Santos Dumont Cigarettes. Your next news service on Springbok Radio will be Nice Flitzer at 3.57 p.m. this afternoon.